you're listening to That Gets My Goat. All right, hey folks, this is Rich Outfield. And Big Anklevich, welcome back to another Dune Steve on the Go version of That Gets My Goat. Can we just call it That Gets My Goat on the Go? T-G-M-G on the Go? T-G-M-G-O-T-G? Oh, <laughs> yuck. So, or just OTC. Wait, what's OTC? It's over the counter. It's what they call, like, when you get, uh, they're like, Prilosec is now available in Prilosec OTC. I didn't know that. Huh. I thought that that was, you know, for hemorrhoids and stuff. Well, I'm sure there are things that are for hemorrhoids that are OTC. That's what they call it when something has gone from being prescription to not needing a prescription, I think. OTC, if you know me. (laughs) That's right. So, I wanted to complain about something, but I think we promised to talk about resolutions instead. Okay. Well, then let's do it. So, do you tend to make New Year's resolutions every January? I uh, probably at least think about it every January. I don't think I did make any resolutions last year. Although the year before was actually a fairly successful year for me. Last year was utterly unsuccessful. I was just looking through as we were getting ready to leave, and I was thinking, oh, we'll have all these people that usually do voices for us with us. I need to get some stories, and maybe we can read some with them. And I went looked through my stories. My folder for last year has basically only got ideas in it. It doesn't have, like, a single actual story. I didn't do anything last year. Oh, yeah, I just wrote that one story. No, that was 2011 I wrote that one story. It was the last time I did anything. So, at the very least, I wasn't especially successful, but the making of the resolutions made me do three stories instead of zero. How many stories did you write in 2012? Uh, I didn't number them, but I would say only like one or two, probably. And none of them were ones that I would say, yeah, that's a good story that I wrote. It's more like I had to throw that out for something. But 2011 was a good year for you, and how did you do then? 2011, I think, was the year that we started out the year with that 52 weeks, 25 stories thing that Lizanne Hurd came up with. And I didn't go very far with that, but the first month or two, I wrote two stories at least before I finally petered out and did nothing. And then we had also a Broken Mirror story event that year, which I had to uh, participate in some way or another. And I think also that was the year where I had done well on my diet in like August, where I'd like eaten like no sugar for the entire month. And I said, you know what? If I can eat no sugar for a whole month, then I can write every day for a whole month too. And I made that goal and I did that and wrote two stories Oh. Exploding flames, dude. <laughs> I'm going to dance around your corpse. <laughs> There's three lanes now, too. Is he coming over in front of you? But yeah, so I had all those factors which caused me to write stories. And they're not all great. Well, they're my stories, so they're none of them great. But uh, they're not terrible, all of them. Although one of them did get a one. <laughs> Gee, you've never mentioned that before. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, when, when will that story be available for people to listen to? Uh, it should be soon. I don't know. The guy who's uh, editing it down said it would be a few months. But that was, you know, a few months ago. So I don't know how much longer it will be before it that will be come over. Words. I think it was just because, A, it was his first time ever doing anything. And, B, he couldn't get started on it for a little while. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Oh, don't do that. Cold out there. I'll hold the farts in if I got to keep you from rolling the window down. That's a nice looking little... Did I tell you about New Year's Eve that I had to fart, right? And oh. we were, you know, in a huge area of tons of people. And I was like, oh, shoot, I really, really have to fart. I, Oh, geez, what am I going to do? And then everybody's like, okay, ten. Nine, and everybody started to chant. I thought, wow, when everybody's you know, celebrating and cheering and hugging and kissing people that aren't me, then I can fart. Oh my gosh, this is great. Thank you, baby New Year. Two, one. As I should old acquaintance be for, and I just, oh, I farted. And never come to mind. And everybody's just so happy and cheering. And this woman next to me went, oh my God, somebody farted that loud. I mean, it was like, oh, the humanity. And I just, I had to run away. <laughs> 
I laughed so hard that I was like, hey, happy. Ah! I couldn't. <laughs> It was the Hindenburg disaster, in but out in the open, no less, too. You were out of doors, weren't you? No, it's too cold to do that, dude. Oh, sorry. So getting back to the uh, non-fart-related subjects, uh, we were talking resolutions. And so I did resolutions this year. I'm, I'm trying, I'm hoping that I can get some writing done. One of the things that I know for a certainty is that sooner or later... I'm just going to get laid off of my job, you know what I mean? They're just going to be like, okay, uh, nobody watches TV news anymore. The last person that watches TV news is dead. And so we're going to have to get rid of all you people that work here. Because nobody watches anymore. Anybody that's younger than us, and in some cases we're still too young to watch even TV news. And so sooner or later it's just going to happen. What I want to do, what I've said on here many times that I'd like to do is be an author. But that's something you have to do. And I keep not doing it. And so basically I'm thinking I need to get going because it takes a while to learn how to be a really good writer. And the way you learn it is by writing, seeing what needs to be improved and working on it. And since I haven't been doing much writing, I don't improve much because of it. And so I'm trying to get myself to do some writing, force myself to do this writing, get it going, make it a habit, and get myself improving and working on it. I don't know if I have the stick-to-itiveness that it takes to do that, but, you know, it's time to find out, I guess. And if not, then maybe I just need to learn how to do something else so that when I get laid off, I'll have a career that I can change into because my family's not going to appreciate not having food So anyways, the goals that I set for myself this year, there are several. One of them was to every day pull out this tablet and talk about the story that I'm writing uh, or planning to write and, you know, work it out in my head and record it and then uh, listen to that and transcribe it as I plan the story. Not necessarily transcribe it. I don't need a word for word or anything, but writing down the most important points and uh, the interesting ideas that I have for the story so that those things will actually make it into the story instead of me totally forgetting. So that's goal number one. Goal number two was to write half hour a day. Now that's not like a hard fast once a half hour comes you're done. I would like to actually write more than a half hour a day if I find myself able to do so. I want to use half hour of my lunch break to write and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that I think I can also use this tablet for that because I got this student edition or whatever of the tablet which came with a big keyboard that you can hook right into it I found that if I stay at my desk at work during my lunch I wind up working on work during my lunch instead of whatever you know if I say okay I'm going to write during lunch I don't I wind up working on work instead or surfing the internet and wasting time or whatever it is, but it's not going to be writing that I work on. So I was thinking I could take this tablet out to my car and just sit out there and write on the little keyboard that it comes with and use that as my thing. So yeah, write half hour during my lunch, half hour a day, which could all be during the lunch or could be spread out if it it takes that. I wanted to do goals for like weeks and months and years and kind of a thing. So you have small goals to work towards, bigger goals to work towards biggest goals. And my weekly tally, I wanted to get 5,000 words written a week. I worked that out and that comes out to 700 and like 13 point something something, which I just rounded up to 715 as a daily goal. A monthly goal was 20,000 words, which would basically be getting my weekly goal every week for four weeks. And then my yearly goal was to get 25 stories written, which should be pretty easy. I mean, if you think an average story would probably be 5,000 words, I should be able to write one a week if I'm actually doing my other goals. So getting 25 in 52 weeks should happen if I fulfill all the other goals. So those are my goals for the year in writing. And so today is what? The 5th? 6th? 6th, yeah. So today's the 6th. How have you done in these 6 days since you've made this resolution? 
Uh, I did pretty good the first two days. I haven't totally got my story that I wanted to start on, like, set out. I'm one of those kind of people that if I don't plan it out enough, it'll be pretty lame if I just try to fly by the seat of my pants, which I guess that's one of those things they call people that write. They have two different camps. There's the planners and the pantsers. Ah. I think is how they, they put it out, but the people that fly by the seat of their pants are someone like a Stephen King, where we've talked about him, and he thinks, you know, if you use an outline for your story, you're uncreative, and it's going to suck. Well, I'm not one of those kind of people. If I don't do an outline, A, it's never going to get finished. It's just going to fall apart somewhere in the middle. And if it does get finished, it's not going to be very good. It, it's it's going to seem like it's something you made up as you went along instead of you gave yourself a little bit of a plan to. Especially with the characters. My characters have a tendency to be all the same person, which is just me with a goatee or me as a girl or whatever. They're, they're going to all be exactly the same, so I try to do as much planning. And I worked on that for the first couple of days. The last couple of days, I purposefully slacked. I knew what I was supposed to be doing, and I'm just like, eh, I don't want to, and so I did something else, so I'm obviously not there yet. I need to improve, and I'm, I'm afraid about that, because if, if I don't start out really good, is it likely that I'm going to get better? It seems like in, in, in the past, when I've done like a diet or something like that, I'm always the most faithful to it when I first start, and then as time goes by, I start cheating a little more and a little more and a little more until, you know, the whole thing's gone out the window. So I'm hoping that this isn't the best I'm going to be through the whole year, or else I might as well not have bothered with those goals. But yeah, that's how it's been for the first five days. Okay, but if you are slacking off now, does that screw over your long-term goals? You know what I mean? If you didn't write yesterday or the day before, does that mean that this week you're not going to meet your numbers, which means this month you're not going to meet your numbers, which means this year you're not going to meet your numbers? Well, it's possible, I suppose. One of the reasons why I made those goals of the month and the, and the week and everything is so that, you know, you have a fresh start every time, you know what I mean? Maybe you didn't make your 5,000 this week. But once the week is over, your 5,000 starts again, so you can make that goal. And you could even try to do better than the 5,000 and maybe make up for it for the month-long goal. It's just one of those things, you know, a lot of times people will make a, a New Year's resolution where they're like, I'm not going to eat any sugar for a year. Then they eat sugar like two weeks in and they're done for the whole year you got to make your goals in a way so that it gives you a chance where you screw up. Well, you screwed up, but, you know, you can start again. You don't have to just quit until 2014. You can just get back on the horse and make the the goals. And I think the annual goal is low enough that I should be able to make up for it, even if I screw up on a week here or a week there. Okay, well, and, and it's good to motivate yourself, but sometimes you need outside stimuli, too. And when I was in L.A. and I was part of this writer's group, it was nice to have pressure, to have expectations, to have other people that are like, okay, hey, what are you going to share tonight? And I was like, oh, crap. And I'd always have to write it the day before or whatever, or that day, feverishly writing so that I could print it out and have something to share. But that's also good to have some fire lit under your butt that is not just your own fire that you somehow magically create with your mutant power, but to have somebody else say, somebody dropped out. Do you think you'd have something you could share with us in two days? And you're like, oh crap, I have to do it right now. At least that was my experience. I love when somebody says, I need you to write a story about this. And because they've given it to me and they have an expectation of something in return, it's so much harder for me to slack off and go, eh, you know, I just nothing was coming. Or, ah, it got dark. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It totally helps. And that's, uh, I think we mentioned it in this show or maybe in the last show, but that's one of the things that I did also is that I published this stuff all on my blog in an attempt to hopefully have some people try and hold me to account for these goals that I've made. And I mean, we'll see how that whether that works or not, because it's only been five days since I put that out. 
And the other thing is we've got this event going on right in the middle of it all. I, I expected it would probably interrupt everything a little bit, that I wouldn't do much writing while we we're uh, on our way to or while we are in or on our way home from Las Vegas. It would all be just, you know, going to strip clubs and stuff like that. So, you know, I... Uh, <laughs> Killing people in white Audis, maybe? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Same guy that I was complaining about last episode. He's still there. He speeds up, and then he slows down. At one point, I finally went around him. I'm like, okay, I'll do 100. Get away from this guy. And as soon as he could, he did the same to get in front of me and then slowed down again. Yeah, good times on the road. But as far as this new Media Expo thing goes, I, I've not been to one before, so I don't know what it will be like. But hopefully there will be panels and things that we can go to that will inspire us. We'll be like, oh my gosh, this guy gave me a couple ideas that I didn't normally have. Or this guy just said something that I can hold in my heart you know, for a couple of days till I forget and motivate me to, to work harder or to do something that I wanted to do but never had the courage to do or, or whatever the deal is. I mean, I know that people go to seminars, they go to self-help retreats, and they go to conventions and things like that for that kind of uh, re-energizing. You know, that kind of thing that's like, okay, this is going to be my motivator for the next six months or the next year or whatever the deal is. And I know that I mentioned that to you last year and that Kevin Smith said his favorite weekend of the year is, is Comic-Con. And he looks forward to coming and it gets him excited and it pumps him up for months afterward. And it's so weird because he's just a lazy, fat stoner that could do, or at least at one point in his career, could have done whatever he wanted and chose not to, but yet he's still inspirational because there's something to be said for don't do as I've done. This is what I should have done. This is what you could do. You know, you don't have to be like, I'm a multimillionaire because I did A, B, and C. It, it's also useful to hear somebody say, I would be a multimillionaire right now if I had done A, B, and C. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes, I guess. See if it's... Uh, <laughs> Well, like I said, we don't know what to expect. Maybe if you have space, we can record a couple coming back where we talked about the New Media Expo and what we liked and what we, how it flew in the face of our expectations or how, you know, I mean, wouldn't it be great if we were both super psyched and it's like, oh, and we're going to do this. And you've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> we're going to do this and hold us to it. Yeah, that would be very cool. I guess we'll find out. That you'll be hearing us all the way through, like, April, still doing new media expos to and froms, doing Steve Song the goes. Wait, TGMG's OTG's. Uh, that sounds awful. <laughs> well, okay, so I guess we'll, we'll end this particular episode. But, uh, as always, there's comments, there's a comments page, and there are, there's a forum. If you guys have some New Year's resolutions that you'd like to share, or some support for big resolutions. I mean, maybe I should make some kind of resolution too so that it's not just on you. I don't know. But you, you said that you wouldn't make any resolutions this year because you knew you just wouldn't keep them anyways. Oh, has anybody out there ever felt that way? Well, maybe once you reach a certain age, you're like, you know what, I'm fooling myself saying, okay, I'm going to exercise every day. I'm going to lose 35 pounds. My ball sack is going to get way less gray and turn more flesh colored. These are things... That you're just like, you know what? I am what I am. It's the color it is. And I'm fat. And, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, there, I, there have to be people out there who are constantly in a state of self-improvement. And then there have to be people who are just happy with where they are, who they are. And I'm neither of those things. Right. You're in a constant state of self-destruction. Nice. We will destroy... It will destroy you? What? This will destroy you was the name of the band. I've always enjoyed New Year's Eve and the idea of, you know, hey, the old year is done. Forget about all those things that, that you failed at or all the things. I don't know. I mean, nobody ever says, wow, 2008 was great. Let's forget all that crap. You know, it's, it's always the mistakes and the errors and the things that you might have done that you didn't do, that your regrets. And that, that they're telling you, put that aside. You've got a blank slate now. It's the first of a new year, and you can make of it what you will. And that's always been really cool to me, and I still like it. I just didn't really take it to heart this year. Because I, too, 
participated in the 52 weeks, 25 stories thing, and I've made goals, and I've even set them on the air a couple of times of, folks, by the time this episode airs, you know, you'll be able to go and buy our stories if you want, and if you like those, we're going to have other stories that you can buy, and, you know, and I'm going to be a better person, and I'm going to stop killing. There are things that I say I'm going to do, and then I don't do them, and maybe part of me is afraid to say, okay... Here's my new goals, because somebody out there will say, ah, 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 what happened to your old goals? You didn't make those. You're still a turd. That person that says that is more of a turd than you are as well. I, I don't know. Maybe that person that says that is me. There's that too. 2012, for our podcast, was good because we gained new listeners and we had a couple of new authors that we never had before and a couple of really great episodes that I think were among our best. But we put out far fewer in 2012 than we did in 11, 10, or 9, I would imagine. Maybe not 9, but the quantity decreased quite a bit. And whether the quality increased or the quality stayed the same, I guess that's for somebody else to judge. Uh, part of me wants to say, we're going to do better in 2013. You'll see. We're going to have more episodes, you know, I'm going to work harder and all that, but I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, on 2012 and 2013? Well, yeah, that's definitely something that did happen. We did have a lot less episodes in 2012 than we have in any year before that. And I think a lot of that, there were strange factors that came and went with that. I think we relied on certain things to work always and then they broke down on us and we found ourselves without any alternatives and we've talked about things that we'd like to do to fix that so that if something happens and like none of the producers are able to get us a story well we've got this one that you and I wrote or you know one of us wrote that we can just pull out and say okay well then we're doing this episode right now and we'll have those ones kind of you know ready to go for us to do whenever and 2013 we may not do more episodes, but we are going to be different in that, you know, it's one of those things that we've said we're going to do, is we're going to do more of our own stuff on the show. Uh, I don't know if that's better <laughs> or not, but it's the way it's going to go. Well, okay, for example, there was that period when suddenly nobody had anything, and it was going to be a month before anybody even said they would, and of course they didn't. And so you quickly wrote the story, Unfortunate, which was an episode in April or May, I think. You wrote it in just within a week, and we recorded it the next time, and it was up like another week after that, or another week and a half after that. We really ought to do that kind of thing all the time. And I don't know if the audience was like, eh, when they saw that it was one of our own stories. Uh, you know, I, I hope not. I hope they were just happy to see a new episode. I mean, what were your thoughts on that? Was that a positive experience for you, writing Unfortunate, doing it the way we did? It was a positive experience for me. I enjoyed writing it. I enjoyed hearing people's comments on it. They were the kind of comments that would help. They're like, oh, I thought maybe the story might go this way, or maybe it'll do this, or whatever. But nobody was like, oh, your story sucked balls. Why did you make me suffer through that kind of a thing? Why didn't we just have a Mike Resnick story, like a real writer, instead of your shit? But uh, it, I, I liked it. I liked, A, that it, it forced me to write. Like I said, I wrote, that's probably one of two complete stories that I wrote that whole of last year. So it was one of those kind of things where the onus was on me and it forced me to do it. And I sat down and I went to one of those websites that had a, here's prompts for stories. And I picked one and I wrote a story on it. I would like that. That was one of the ideas behind doing more of our own stuff was that now we can say, hey, your story's next month. Yours is the episode next time, so you better write the story. Get going. I haven't seen your finished copy. You're supposed to have it done already. Get on it, kind of a thing. It'll put that onus on us all the time, and that's kind of the point. Well, see, now I'm sort of psyched up to talk about this. So I think we have fodder for another episode. I'm going to sign off now, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to stay on, though, so I'm just going to keep going. And uh, at some point, Rich will come... Oh, oh, okay, I'll sign off as well. Okay, and we'll, and we'll be back for us in two minutes. For you, well, depending on how long it takes me to get it out there. But this has been Rich Outfield. Thank you for listening. And I'm Big Ankovich. We'll see you next time.
That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. This show is lame. As lame as Rochelle feels. Oh shoot, it wasn't even recording. <laughs> <laughs>